We begin at the United Nations Monday, where U.S. President Donald Trump addressed a U.S.-sponsored event aimed at cutting costs and reforming operations of the world body. President Trump spoke on reform while seated between Nikki Haley, the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., and Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations. As a candidate for president, Trump often belittled the U.N., but as president, Trump has praised the Security Council's recent votes to stiffen sanctions against North Korea for its nuclear bomb test and missile launches. To improve the, e the U.N., Trump says the world body must hold its management accountable. We seek a United Nations that regains the trust of the people around the world. In order to achieve this, the United Nations must hold every level of management accountable, protect whistleblowers, and focus on results rather than on process. To honor the people of our nations, we must ensure that no one and no member state shoulders a disproportionate share of the burden and that's militarily or financially. Well, President Trump is set to speak to the UN General Assembly on Tuesday, his first appearance before the group. As the world leaders meet at this week's UNGA, they face a busy agenda amid numerous ongoing conflicts, including a growing humanitarian crisis in Myanmar. Viewer UN correspondent Margaret Bashir has more. Two weeks ago, North Korea conducted an underground nuclear test that brought it international condemnation and a new round of tough economic sanctions. On Friday, Pyongyang defiantly launched a missile over Japan into the Pacific Ocean for the second time in a month. What to do about Kim Jong-un and his nuclear ambitions will figure high in leaders' discussions, but a solution is unlikely. There will be a lot of talk about North Korea at the UN, but the reality is that the only chance for a diplomatic breakthrough is in bilateral talks between Washington and Beijing away from UN diplomacy. In Myanmar, also known as Burma, 400,000 minority Rohingya Muslims have fled a military crackdown seeking refuge in neighboring Bangladesh. Myanmar's de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, is skipping the UN General Assembly amid criticism that she has not done more to stop the violence. But despite her absence, two high-level UN meetings are planned about the growing crisis. Leaders will also be trying to persuade President Trump not to withdraw from the 2015 deal to stop Iran from obtaining nuclear bombs. He has called the agreement terrible and threatened to tear it up. I think this agreement is a, a very important agreement. I think that it contributed to uh, an important de-escalation at the moment, and it is a factor of stability. And it's my opinion that these, uh, all parties should do everything possible for this agreement to be preserved. Leaders will also discuss Hurricane Irma, which devastated parts of the Caribbean and southern Florida. They will focus on the hurricane response and building communities that are more resilient to natural disasters and climate change. Some wonder if Irma and Hurricane Harvey, which flooded southeastern Texas, will convince President Trump to reverse his decision to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord, which more than 190 other countries have signed on to. He has made some hints that perhaps he won't withdraw after all. If he says anything like that in New York, that will be a big diplomatic win for him because other leaders will be charmed. Some big names like Russian President Vladimir Putin, Chinese President Xi Jinping, and German Chancellor Angela Merkel will be absent from this year's General Assembly. For others, including President Trump and French President Emmanuel Macron, it will be their first time at the international gathering, and all eyes will be on them. Well, for more insight on Monday's activities at the UNGA, let's go live to New York, where viewers Margaret Bashir is standing by at the United Nations. Margaret, uh, looking, li looking and listening at the president, uh, quite a measured tone there. When you think back at what he used to say about the UN, right? Right. Well, maybe he's coming around with all the crises that he's facing with North Korea and such to the idea that maybe there is a place for the U.N. and for multilateralism uh, in his vision of foreign policy. We'll have to wait till Tuesday to find out for sure, though, uh, when he addresses the General Assembly. And talking about Tuesday, uh, he's going to be addressing the U.N. At General Assembly for the first time, but also he's going to have some other meeting later, right? 
Yes, he has the uh, speech in the GA in the morning, and uh, you know we're ex expecting to hear about all those topics that uh, I mentioned in the package. And uh, on uh, Wednesday, also on Wednesday, he's having a working lunch with African leaders, and uh, the UN is having a lot of meetings on Africa this week on Somalia and South Sudan, Central African Republic, Mali. So uh, although Africa is not in the headlines, perhaps this year at the General Assembly, uh, it's certainly uh, not fallen off the agenda. What, what, what can we look forward to, uh, knowing that uh, quite a number of African leaders, of course, are going to be speaking, but uh, on those issues, on those other topics on the sidelines, what can we look forward to? Well, Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that prevention, conflict prevention, is really one of his priorities as uh, UN chief. So I think we're going to hear a lot about preventing crises. Uh, people are worried about uh, DRC, for example. Well, you know, what will happen with the presidential election there? Uh, so preventing crises. Burundi, there's been some flare-ups recently. Um, so on Africa, we, we want to see resolution of problems like in South Sudan, but I think, uh, you know, with all the leaders here, it's time to put a little momentum and political will uh, behind these agendas and see if they can kind of move some of these protracted conflicts uh, forward towards a solution. Now, we've covered this uh, UNGA so many years. Do you get the sense that perhaps the meeting is too large to achieve much and perhaps whatever follows after that might be more significant? Well, I don't think that you see big breakthroughs at the UN General Assembly, but it's important because it gives leaders an opportunity to meet each other, to have bilaterals, to sort of develop personal relationships, especially for President Trump. He's a, a, a new politician. I mean, he was a businessman before. He, he didn't have experience as a senator or a governor or somebody who might have met other world leaders. So it's important to come to an event like this to meet other world leaders and try and develop a personal relationship relationship with mm -hmm. them so that you can push through change oh. and other issues. Okay, Margaret, thank you very much. <laughs> That's a view as Margaret Bashir reporting from the United Nations. And for all of your UN Assembly news, uh, be sure to follow Margaret on Twitter at M Bashir. Now security and protesters uh, protesters are warming up for Tuesday's United Nations Assembly. Uh, viewers Daniel Schaff reports from New York. United Nations Security is preparing for its annual General Assembly and the arrival of leaders and delegations from 193 member states. The added barricades do no harm to business, says a food cart vendor who's been working here a few months and cites his boss. The guy who was here before, that's what he said. I'm, I'm new with him and uh, we, I see too many customers come here. But it is global security, including North Korea's nuclear threats, that will be on the minds of many gathering here next week. Also to be addressed, hundreds of thousands of Rohingya Muslims fleeing Myanmar's Rakhine state to Bangladesh to escape violence described as ethnic cleansing. A few protesters Friday had harsh words for Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi for failing to speak out for the Rohingya. She's trying to lie to the wall and she is now morally bankrupt. So we condemn her because she is going the wrong path and we want her to come to the right path. With mounting criticism, Aung San Suu Kyi cancelled her trip to the UN, citing terrorism in Rakhine State, a reference to Rohingya militants. Heads of state will debate the issues of peace, security and global development during the week-long gathering. Daniel Sheriff, VOA News, New York.